All right. I'm going to clean up a little to get ready because this is when I'm going to be making my big mess. Okay. So I have pre-cut my bandages. I've got like a pretty big stack. I usually just like them around this size, I would say. That's like the width of my hand. Um, I don't have my ruler with me. Two and a half inches, maybe. I guess I have my grid on here. Yeah, around two and a half inches or three inches. It just doesn't matter, but I like them in a size about like this um, because I can easily dip them in the bucket and still have control over it. I find that if I make them too big, then I end up getting them tangled in a mess and it takes me more time. So um, just cut them, uh, mine might be five inches wide, but just cut them into little stacks. Sometimes I'll have a few smaller sizes. Yes, where are my smaller ones? Um, in different piles, but I think for this particular shape and for the aesthetic that I'm going for, I don't need so much fine detail. I usually keep um, a small stack near me and then the bigger stack away from me um, because this is messy and I don't want to get water on the whole pile as I'm working because that will harden and set on that stack and then that will kind of ruin those bandages. So um, yeah, I usually keep some off to the side and some kind of closer to me. And then I have to strategize. What am I going to do? Am I going to build from the bottom up? Am I going to go from the top down? If I went from the top down, it might get a little top heavy and kind of want to fall. So maybe it's smarter to start at the bottom. Um, maybe I want to put it on its side at first to build a little up at the bottom. Maybe I want to kind of do two halves. Um, it's sort of up to you. Um, okay, I am going to start and um, I think I'm going to work my way um, maybe on the bottom of this surface because I do want this form covered fully in the round. And so, um, you know, I'm even thinking if you have a smaller form and you have a bucket, you could put this in a bucket as you're working on one side versus the other. My shape just kind of happens to be a little bit large. Um, so I'm just going to work right here on the table. Um, okay, so. I'm going to grab a small stack of the bandages and um, I want to make sure this is in the shot. One piece at a time. I don't soak a whole bunch in there. They get lost in the water. Um, and so I'm just going to sort of dip it into the water, under the water and pull it out and let it drip. Um, I've seen some people sort of squeegee these off before and um, that can work but sometimes I feel like too much plaster comes off of it so it's, it's sort of up to you what you're thinking about. The other thing I just was looking at and I'm going to grab is um, a brush. Some kind of a cheap chip brush can be useful. This is not necessary but I've also um, found sometimes it's nice to have a brush to get into nooks and crannies. Um, totally up to you. Okay so I'm going to dip this in and start applying it. So like I said, I just start um, dipping it under the surface of the water and out really quick like, letting it drip just a little bit. You can see that all the plaster has kind of soaked um, in the bandages. And then I'm just going to apply it over the form. And it should stick just fine. And you can see when you first just put it on, it's kind of got holes and it's a little porous. But as you smooth it on, those gauze, the gauze disappears and it should um, be a little bit smoother and then it'll kind of have more of that strength to it. I wrapped it around this edge and I might continue to work my way around that bottom edge. So again, just a quick dip in, let it drip a little bit and then I'll come cover this other side. Smooth it and rub it in to get those um, gauze marks out of the way. So this is what I was saying. Some people will kind of squeegee it off. So you do want to pay attention when 
um, bur the burlap or the plaster bandages, pa plaster bandages overlap, and then also what they're doing in the seams. If you kind of um, drape it, then it won't have that kind of hard fold. So the inside corners might be where you find um, a brush useful. It's not wet, like super wet. I just damp dampened it. And then I can kind of dab it in that corner. Um, if you're finding it hard to get the um, plaster bandages to kind of want to stick, you can try that. Keep this moist though and rinsed so it doesn't harden with plaster. I might do one more kind of around the base or around the middle, just for a little added strength. And then I'll start moving my way up and around. So here I'm gonna go at a diagonal. And then kind of pinch that spot right there. So I've got the base all the way around, just with one layer. This one got a little large, it'll be okay. I'll work with it. I did forget to mention when you cut these bandages smaller, it is gonna make a mess. Um, dust or not dust well plaster dust will fall off of them and so I usually like to do it over a trash can or um, a newspaper or something so that I'm uh, containing the mess and not having the dust sort of the plaster dust all over the place You know, the aesthetic of the, the sort of textural quality of it is, is up to you. Again, if you're a perfectionist, it is not going to be perfect and smooth. And if you are a little bit on the sort of fast and sloppy side, I don't want to see globs and sort of loose ends. Um, I want to kind of see evidence that you were making an effort to layer and kind of smooth this out. The structural nature of these plaster bandages is not super um, important for this particular project, but um, there would be some shapes that are a little bit more kind of dynamic where, um, or not, not just sort of covering over a solid form where you need those bandages to add a layer of strength to the work. Usually two to three layers of the plaster bandages is enough sufficient to build up a good strength. In this case, one layer is probably sufficient unless you have areas that you want to come cover over because you don't like the um, surface quality. So if you have an area where you're like, oh, that's not I know I'm not going to get it perfectly smooth, but I think I could get it better. Then you can always um, go ahead and add more. The bandages um, should start drying actually fairly quickly too. Um, maybe within five to ten minutes. It They won't be like, like dry, but they'll be hard um, in that amount of time which is nice. It's a pretty um, fast set. And the temperature of your water also affects how fast your plaster bandages set. And so because I'm working with these one at a time and um, I have them in smaller pieces that I can manage, I have a fairly warm water. It's more comfortable for my hands and it will cool off over time as well. Um, but warmer water will um, increase the set time just a little bit and that can be uh, that can be helpful. It's also not a bad idea to start thinking about layering these, um, sort of crossing over one another. Again, that's more for strength 
and this process doesn't necessarily need um, that element, but I am overlapping the bandages a little bit. And I might start changing direction. I think it's probably been about 10 minutes since I started adding the plaster bandages. The bottom half is feeling a little bit stiffer in relation to the rest of the form. I can see in some areas where I'm getting a little bit of pooling of water, especially in that crevice. And if you didn't put um, tape down then you definitely want to remove that. Even a paper towel could kind of help pick that up, but you don't want water soaking into that cardboard that can soften it. And at one point I thought, I had initially thought I would lift this up to build it, but I kind of like working in the round like this. And so I think I'll just keep going like that. So I have had students that have used the bandage or the brush to do this whole process. I really like getting my hands dirty and kind of squishing the plaster around. The plaster is not harmful to get on your skin. The worst that it does is it dries out your skin. So if you're kind of sensitive to dryness um, and you have any gloves handy, you certainly could wear them. Um, and I definitely lotion up uh, really well after I'm done using the plaster and I use soap and water to clean my hands really well. So it's been about 17 minutes now and I'm making pretty good progress as I'm working my way up. Some of the bandages are a little thin on plaster. I can actually like see more gauze than I can plaster. Um, and so sometimes I'll use those with the understanding that I'll put more bandages over it um, to see a little less of the gauze. And sometimes I'll just set those off to the side and not use them. Um, and while I just kind of continue to work for a bit here, um, I thought I'd maybe tell you a few more of the uses of these plaster bandages. I really like them because they um, allow you to make fairly durable forms and they can get fairly large provided that your armature below is um, stable. And so I like that they're kind of like cost effective, that they aren't um, super, they're not toxic, plaster is not uh, carcinogenic. Um, that you can kind of um, work with them one at a time. Like I could leave if I had to and, um, you know, come back to this process. Unlike mixing large batches of plaster where you have to work with all of it um, as you have it. So that's one thing that's nice about this. Um, and also besides just like, you know, armatures and covering uh, an existing form that you have made, you can also use these to do um, life casts with. So you could do your face or your torso or your arms or different things like that. You would need to um, do a couple extra steps to prep for that, namely Vaseline um, on your skin and um, making sure that the bandages or the material that you're using is rated for um, your skin because some plasters actually get hot as they um, kick or set and you could end up burning your skin. Most bandages are fine for your skin. They fall in that category. You'd always want to do a small test though, maybe like on your wrist just for a sensitive skin area. 
um, but they're really fun. So you can make life casts out of those. They don't pick up as much detail um, as a alginate mold would. But the cool thing about the plaster bandages is that the, the plaster bandage itself could be used as the actual cast or as the actual piece, or you could use it as a mold to press clay or other materials inside of, or you could cast more plaster inside of it. So it has um, the ability to kind of be the thing, the finished thing, or a mold to um, create a, a, a replica of something. It's also kind of cool um, because I think of it like as a material that like a paleontologist might use or something, you know, they find a bone and if you see them before they transport them, they will wrap them in plaster bandages. So I'm sure there's a few other steps that happen before that particular stage, but this kind of acts like a cast um, that kind of cocoons and protects the form. And so conceptually, I think there's some interesting things about using the gauze and the, the plaster as well. It sort of feels like I'm working with an artifact while I'm doing this. You also can um, apply a different surface treatment over this form if you don't like the look of the plaster bandages. So there can be additional surface treatments that kind of hide the surface or you can also embrace that as the look. My hands are starting to feel a little crusty and I'm about to get to the top half where um, I need a little bit more detail and nuance. And because I kind of have some plaster drying on my hands, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse them off. And I also didn't mention at the start of this video that I like to have um, either a stack of newspaper kind of cut into smaller squares or even some paper towels nearby so that I have something to wipe my hands clean with. Again, even um, when you're finished, you'll wanna rinse your hands in this water before you go to your sink. So you want to get as much plaster out of your fingernails and all of that. I'm not ready to stop yet, but um, I have a stack of smaller pieces of newspaper here. I got newsprint on me, but that's fine. Um, anyways, cleaner hands now to get started on this final little part. And this is setting just a little bit. If I bent it, it would still snap. It's not cured fully. That usually happens after about um, 24, actually not with this plaster. This is actually gonna take a couple days for this to um, kind of fully harden to its full strength. So I'm gonna need a little bit more patience and kind of nuance as I work through these areas here. Um, this I was able to kind of go a little bit faster on. And also you've been seeing me pull out this paintbrush every once in a while. I should also mention if you use a kind of a chip brush or something, um, it's most likely no matter how hard you try to keep it clean, it's gonna end up turning into your forever plaster brush word of advice. Just don't use your most beautiful, precious favorite paintbrush for that job. The bandages are great. They will sort of fold and um, go over tight corners. So you shouldn't have to cut them to shape is what I'm saying. If you have a really complex form, you might need to cut a few smaller bandages even than I have done. If you are super unsure of this process and you don't want to mess up something, 
um, go ahead and make just like a small shape. Even a circle would be an interesting shape to try to cover in the plaster bandages just to get the hang of working with the material. I always um, like to practice and test things if I've never used them before on, um, on the thing that's not my like final piece so that I don't feel so worried about ruining something or not doing it right or I can make my mistakes on that other piece. I should also add that um, one of the reasons I love this material is because it also feels fairly low tech. Um, you could, your armature could just be cardboard like we're using. It could be um, aluminum foil. It could be some coat hangers and some newspaper wrapped around them with some tape wrapped around those. Um, I think there's something nice about having materials that are a little bit more accessible to work with that are kind of more cost effective. So this bandage here feels a little bit crusty on the end and that is one of those where I'm just going to actually set it off to the side and not use it because I don't like that texture. That's probably because I dripped some water on my stack of bandages. So on a shape like this, if, if you only had a little bit of tape, I would tape up these narrow little necks or smaller little pieces because this is most certainly where um, that small amount of material could get oversaturated and bend. This is like my smallest little space and so the brush is really helpful. I suppose if you didn't have a brush, you could use like a popsicle stick or something to just kind of help push it into that crevice. I'm getting close to a low pile of plaster bandages. I do have more, but I'm hoping to not have to cut a whole bunch more. got a little wobble to it so I'll have to fix that. I have some solutions for that as well. But it's not terrible at the moment. I can I can work with it. So I cut them a little skinnier and even a little shorter for this final little round. It's also now been about 37 minutes since I've started working. Again, this is a project that could be done in stages. It wouldn't be terrible if half of this were covered in plaster and then you had to go um, do something else. You could um, leave your water settle I usually like to change out my water um, in between sessions if I have to come back to something. Um, so I'll let the water settle. Then when I'm getting ready to work again, I'll dump off the excess water outside, wipe out the sludge of plaster with um, newspaper and toss that and then get fresh water. I don't This is funny. <laughs> I think it's good to make yourself laugh sometimes. So I got really excited about using the brush um, for these small spaces, but um, I'm going to try to sort of do a little bit more with just my hands just to kind of show you that if you're sort of careful and you're sort of just pressing with your fingers instead of rubbing when things feel like they're starting to pull away. 
you can do this you can do all this without a without a brush So I'm giving this a little glance to see where I might want to kind of add another bandage or two if I don't really like the way that something looks. I'm not super excited about this neck where I wrapped the bandages around it, so I'm going to do a couple vertical ones to see if I can sort of bridge that seam a little bit, but I also don't want it to get too thick. In that area, I do want you to be able to see the two planes coming together, so it's kind of a bit of a balancing act. If you totally hated what you did, you also could probably cut it out um, with a utility knife. You might need to wait for it to dry, so it might be something you fix later. Sometimes it's important to know when else to step away from a project. It's not quite going right. Sometimes it's just telling you it's break time. Time to get a snack or take a little walk or Okay, and then I think for the final little bit um, I'll talk to you about that base And so I, you know, I'm kind of looking to see where the lean is. And I have one little last scrap of bandage. I'll grab, I'll grab a few more, but I can wad, I can just sort of dump that into the water and sort of almost sculpt with it, kind of like it's a coil or a little piece of clay. And I can add that where the wobble is. I don't want it to flatten out, so I kind of also have to be a little bit careful. Maybe I can kind of squeeze it from both sides as it's balancing. Also make sure I maintain that curve that I thought was really nice. That kind of undercut for the belly of the bottle. So that helped the front to back, or it's at least starting to help it. And there's a little back and forth wobble left and right. Before I grab more bandages out of my bin, um, I will wash my hands and then make sure they are thoroughly dried because again, I don't wanna get water in the bandages. same thing here assessing front to back where uh, or side to side where that wobble is and I think um, I'll fill in a little on this edge here again I'm kind of taking a small bandage and rolling it up like it's a little clay coil you might not need quite this much um, so depending on how much you're filling in you might want to vary the, the thickness that you start out with. I 
I still have a bit of a wobble front to back, so I'm going to try to build up just a little bit more. You can kind of see where I have some gaps. So push those sides in and up so I don't kind of have this little flare. Same thing on that side. Cool. So once this base sets just a little bit more, I'm going to take just a couple bandages and wrap them underneath to kind of seal those coils in that I had built. Um, and also just visually, it'll help make a nice, um, more of a nice smooth uh, kind of transition. But otherwise, um, because this is um, the plaster bandages that are right against the, the armature or the cardboard form, um, and they don't have to have a lot of strength to them, one round of layering is just fine for this. Again, a hollow form, you'd probably want to add a couple more layers of the plaster bandages. And you can continue to do those layer by layer um, as it sort of hardens and starts setting. You can just go back to the bottom and start adding more and sort of working your way back through the form. You don't have to let it dry in between each layer. So that's one of the nice things too about working with this material. Um, so then again, any leftover bandages, put them in a Ziploc bag so that you're storing them for use later. And then don't forget, I keep harping on you about the importance of your cleanup, but uh, you never put your plaster down your sink drain. And um, so always settle your water out, pre-rinse your hands, uh, etc. Newspaper can be folded up and probably also could just be put in your compost. Um, that little amount of plaster is just fine in the compost um, and or just throw it away. And then hopefully your plastic is clean and you can use that for another round of projects. This again will need to set to dry for a couple days and um, you don't want to leave this set to dry on any kind of wooden surface. Again, there still is a little moisture in here that will um, that could um, create a little water damage on on the wood. So just keep it on plastic or on a yogurt lid or, or something um, while it dries. If you want to speed up the process, you could put a fan on it. You could put a heater on it, you know, within a safe range. Um, but otherwise, just patience and it will dry and harden and feel less damp to the touch. Okay, have fun.